Today we're going to be putting Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi. Okay, firstly let's talk about what Home Assistant is. So we will be running Home Assistant on our Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, Home Assistant is an open source home automation hub. Uh, so what that means is it allows all of the smart tech in your home that's on your home network to be controlled via Home Assistant. Uh, so all of your Philips Hue lights, your smart thermostats, your Alexas or Google Minis, things like that, anything on your network that's supported by Home Assistant can all be controlled via the Home Assistant software. Which is kind of great because it means that you don't have to go into individual apps in order to control your smart home devices. It can all be done from the one place. You can access the uh, Home Assistant software through any device connected to your network that has a web browser. So your phone, your computers, your laptops. Uh, there is also an ISO and Android app uh, for Home Assistant which gives you uh, some more control. Uh, also more tailored control to 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 a smartphone uh, rather than the using it through the web app. Once we have everything up and running, we can use automations within Home Assistant, which we will talk about in more detail in another video, to talk to your smart home devices and make devices that wouldn't normally like to play together work together. So an example of an automation might well be when Lee's smartphone connects to the Wi-Fi network and it's after sunset, turn on the hallway lights. So what we'd hope to achieve by that is when I'm unlocking my front door and my phone connects to the Wi-Fi network, if it's dark outside, my hallway lights will turn on. We could also do that using the GPS data off the phone, um, but automations it, there's really no limit to what you can do with automations and we will be covering that in a further video. Um, there is also other services within Home Assistant uh, that can help us run automations and make things talk to each other a bit more smoothly. So examples of that might be things like MQTT brokers, uh, dynamic DNS services and Samba shares. However, before we can do any of this and make it all work together, we need to flash Home Assistant to our SD card. Okay, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about supported devices. Uh, as things stand today, on the 10th of May 2019, there is 1,366 supported devices or services uh, with Home Assistant. Uh, and we can see some of them here, some very popular things like the Philips Hue lights, IKEA smart lights, Plex, smart things, uh, and the list goes on. Um, you can find this on the Home Assistant website. This number is growing all the time. Okay, before we can flash Home Assistant to our SD card, we first need to prepare our SD card. So here I've got a Windows tool called Disk Manager. We can see this is our SD card down here. Now I have already got the um, HASIO image flashed to this card, but we are going to delete that and flash it again for the purposes of this video. However, you can see it's made a partition here. Now this is fine because we're putting the same software back on it, so this partition is going to be the right size. However, if you've used your SD card for things before, um, you may well want to give yourself kind of a clean slate with your SD card. Now, lots of people say you can just format your SD card, but let's have a quick look at that. So here it is here. Uh, if we do a quick format, yes, that's fine. Format complete. We'll see that the partition still exists uh, in here. So in order to kind of give ourselves a fresh slate here to remove all the partitions from the disk, I'm just going to show you uh, a quick command line prompt that you can use to do that. So we're going to go to the start menu and type in CMD and hit enter to open the command line. And we're going to run disk part. Oops.
Okay, we're going to click yes. Okay, once in here, we're going to go list disk. And this will show us all the disks available on the system at the moment. So we can see that the one that we want is going to be disk 1. So we can go select disk 1. Disk 1 is now selected. Now just in order to make sure that we have actually selected the USB disk here and not our own uh, kind of internal hard drive, because if we start to clean that we're going to knacker our computer, we can say uh, detail disk. And this is going to give us some more information on the disk that we've got selected so we can see that it is in fact a USB, uh, USB storage device. So we know we've got the right disk selected and we're going to type clean and then we can see that it's been cleaned successfully. So when we go back out of here and look at the disk manager again we can see that we now have the full SD card available to us and unallocated. Okay once we have our SD card prepared we now need to go and get the HASIO image. So we're going to head to this URL here which will be in the description and we're going to download the appropriate image for the device that we're using. Today we know we're using a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B so we're going to download this version here. Uh, just click on it and it'll start to download the image straight away. I've cancelled this one because I already have it downloaded. Once downloaded you'll have this zip file. Uh, I used 7-zip to unzip this. Again, I'll put a link for 7-zip in the description. The native Windows extraction tool won't uh, unzip this type of file. Uh, once that's completed, you will then have your HASIO Raspberry 3 version 2.11 disk image here. Next thing we need to do is decide on a piece of software we're going to use to flash the image to the SD card. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, Win32 Disk Imager. This is only a Windows tool, so if you are running on Mac or Linux, uh, Etcher is probably the best choice for you. This will also run on Windows as well. Once that's downloaded and installed, we could open up Win32 Disk Imager. And we need to navigate to the folder in which our image is stored. So we can see here is our image. We'll open that up. We'll select the SD card that we want the flash to and then we can click right. We'll confirm we want to flash it. Now this can take a little while so I am going to fast forward through this bit. Okay once the process is complete we will get a box saying right complete. Uh, unfortunately I just clicked OK before the recording started there. Uh, once it's complete we can eject our SD card from our Windows machine here, uh, insert it into the Raspberry Pi and turn it on. So what we have here is our Raspberry Pi. Uh, we have it plugged into the network via an Ethernet cable which is going off to my network switch. We're powered with the micro USB cable. Okay so once we have our Raspberry Pi up and running and connected to our network we're going to head to our router. Now for most people your router is going to be 192.168 0.1 or 0.1.1. It's a bit out of the scope of the video, uh, this, but if you're going to be doing a lot of home automation and stuff, you should know how to get into your router settings. A uh, quick Google of your router type uh, will help you out with that. I'm running PFSense, uh, which I am going to do some videos about in the future, but we're going to look at our DHCP leases and we're going to look for our uh, HASIO install here, and we can see that our uh, Raspberry Pi has been given IP address 192.168.0.5. Now I have actually set this as a static IP address. It doesn't really matter. Just look for your HASIO and the IP address that it's been assigned. Once we've found it, we can go into our web browser and type in 192.168.0.5 and then port 8123. Once we've done that, we'll be presented with this screen is we're preparing HASIO and it can take up to 20 minutes. In my experience it doesn't really take 20 minutes but that will depend on the speed of your network and your internet connection I suppose. Um, but yeah just wait patiently while this does its thing. 
Okay, so once Home Assistant has finished uh, its initialization, you'll be presented with this screen. So just go ahead and enter your name and a password and click create account. This will be the admin account for your Home Assistant. And there we go, we are booted into a clean install of Home Assistant. The possibilities really are endless with this software and I am going to do some more videos on it very soon uh, so stay tuned to that. Uh, I am a new channel on YouTube so please uh, hit that subscribe button and like and comment it really does help out it's just one click for you but it's uh, it really does help me out and hopefully be able to improve the production quality of my videos and uh, have a successful channel. Thank you very much for watching.